our webinar on reality check, uh, living and working in Germany as an engineer. I hope you can all hear us and see us. Um, I think the microphone is on, right? Oh, yeah. Perfect. If you have any problems, just write it in the chat. Um, give me a couple of seconds. I want to share my screen with you. So today we have guests here from, uh, they immigrated from Costa Rica to Cologne, Germany, uh, seven eleven years ago, and they want to share their experiences with us. And that's why we prepared an interview today. But before we start, I want to introduce to you the portal Make It in Germany shortly. But then beforehand, uh, some technical advices. Uh, I hope you can hear us. If not, uh, make sure you have selected computer audio in your GoToWebinar user panel. Um, if you have still any problems, just switch the audio off and turn it on again. It seems easy, but just solve most of the problems actually and uh, you can type your question to Carolina and Chris uh, in the chat don't be confused only we moderators can see your question and my colleague Marlene in the back end will collect your questions and uh, we after the interview will read them out loud so first of all some information on the court and make it in Germany then comes the interview and then it's time for some of your questions so what is Make It in Germany? Make It in Germany is the German government's official information portal for qualified professionals and offers information for those professionals and also graduates and companies in Germany as well as institutions. The website exists since June 2012 and is available in four languages in German, English, Spanish and French. Since its start, it counts more than 75 million users worldwide. So what does Make It in Germany offer? In a nutshell, everything you need to know about working and living in Germany. So you get information on uh, the entry procedure, on how to find a job in Germany and living in Germany. We therefore offer also graphics, checklists, job listings, we have a quick check and we have also our webinars, newsletter, explainer views and more. We are also active on social media, on X, YouTube and LinkedIn. And also we offer advice via email and hotline. You can see the contact details down below. Um, which topics do we cover? General information on working in Germany, uh, study and training, visa and residence, and as I said before, also living in Germany. Um, as you already may know, um, the Student Immigration Act was updated in Germany and all the new legal changes are available at our website. Um, this information we provide on the portal out from official hand and are translated also in those four languages. Um, you can see graphics and overviews and we also have several tools on the information on how to enter Germany. And of course we have our job listings where German employers publish their um, job listings um, with a focus on international professionals. You can find job offers in different branches, you can find contact details for your job application, and you can also uh, subscribe for a job newsletter. And because it would be also a topic today here, we have updated our section on living in Germany, like on how to find a flight in Germany, how to learn German, and how is the mobility working in Germany, and how to meet new friends here. So you can check this out, and that's it. So now we can start and go into practice on how is it actually living in Germany. <laughs> so, Carol and Chris, thank you for being here and just introduce yourself and tell us why did you decide to come to Germany? Well, first, thank you for the invitation and having us in this space. I'm Carolina Guzman and as you said, I come from Costa Rica. I'm 33 years old and I have a bachelor's degree in communication sciences and I'm currently studying a master's in media cultural studies at the University of Cologne and uh, also working half time at the German, German Economic Institute. Mm -hmm. Again, thank you for the invitation. Uh, I'm Christian Quiroz. I, I also come from Costa Rica. I'm also 33 years old and I have a licentiate degree in civil engineering. I'm currently working as a project engineer in road and railway planning. 
and we came here five years ago, almost five years ago. Yeah. Thank you, Sikha. Yeah. So why was Germany, and what was your picture beforehand before coming to Germany? So before coming to Germany, I thought that um, it was a cold country, especially in winter, but <laughs> also um, you hear a lot of um, stereotypes of German people also being cold people, not being so friendly. And uh, we also heard that the German transportation system was perfect <laughs> without delays. <laughs> and <laughs> um, most of these stereotypes are not true. Yeah. Yeah, we've encountered yeah, <laughs> and very friendly people. Yeah. yeah, so that's not the case, as we will we were told. And what can I add? Um, yeah, the country be, being cold in winter is yeah. is true. <laughs> yeah, I also expected to be colder. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. yeah you get used to it with the time. That's a, that's yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. That, that I have to, I have to say, we come from a tropical country, and that's very different. So. Oh yeah, I can imagine <laughs> that. Yeah. Was it hard to adjust here to the climate? At first, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we had to buy a lot of clothes because mm -hmm. we don't have that, that kind of clothes in the tropics. But <laughs> um, it was actually easy because people uh, recommend things like um, mm -hmm. once you say I, I'm too cold they say hey, get this and you can go to this place and buy some uh, inner clothes and such things that we didn't know existed yeah. with, because we didn't use it ah, yeah, in Costa Rica yeah but you get used to it yeah yeah okay. I think a lot of clothes I don't I don't use anymore that I bought at the beginning ah, yeah. okay. <laughs> like this it layers. gets better yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry about it, just to the yeah, temperature. Yeah. yeah. It's good to hear. <laughs> so, what were your first steps in preparing for the move to Germany? Mm. You can begin. Yeah, so in Costa Rica, the preparations were for us, luckily, really smooth, uh, mm -hmm. actually. We called German Embassy at first, told them our situation, and asked for the list of documents that we needed to apply for the visa. I think they redirected us to the website at the moment and we mm -hmm. looked at the list and they gave us an appointment for like three weeks after the call. We prepared the documents which included the university certificates, the marriage certificate, passports and copies, um, mm -hmm. work contracts from CLIS, uh, among others. It all had to be translated to German and they also have to have uh, a stamp from the Costa Rican government um, wow. that uh, certified they were uh, legit. Uh, we went to the appointment uh, three weeks later and they told us it could take more than a month to get our visas, but it wasn't the case. It was a lot faster, like a couple of weeks, wow. and because Chris qualified for the blue card um which is a special visa for qualified professionals uh, especially needed in germany uh, in germany's labor market actually mm -hmm. so yeah that was really smooth at the time yeah went really well with the embassy in costa rica i must say mm -hmm. yeah once we got the visa we started looking for a place to live and reading the internet in blogs we realized it wasn't an easy task mm -hmm. so yeah the market uh, you must take that into account is uh, really hard here it's really crazy in germany you have to really fight for your place and in bigger cities it's harder harder yeah, yeah. you have to apply to a lot of apartments uh, you have to go to view appointments that's so that's needed when you're here and we needed to do that from costa rica so we applied to uh how do you say a part no it's a short stay apartment yeah you know? mm -hmm. And we got a place that uh, let us make the so-called ameldum, the registration in the city, because that's the first step you need to begin your life in Germany when you're here, when you set foot on the on the country. And yeah, once we had the um, the apartment, well, I think it was a three month or six month six month stay. Yeah. And we had a page club, I think. The, um, insurance the health insurance for the first months mm -hmm. and yeah when we had everything we booked the tickets and three months later we were here yeah ah, mm -hmm. so i think it kind of works smoothly for you yeah. 
Yeah, because of this short stay apartment, it, it was okay. actually easy mm -hmm. to move in. Yeah. Yes. But um, yeah, at first we were uh, a little bit um, confused because of uh -huh. the um, market, of the apartment market here. Um, but yet, yeah, for us it was yeah. actually easy. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, but it's one really important note because, uh, you know, have, when you move to Germany, you have to register yourself for two weeks. Yeah. So that's why it was so important to find a, an apartment really, really fast, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, and some hotels or uh, Airbnbs won't work because they don't give you this uh, note from the mm -hmm. landlord that you need to go to the registration office. That's really important. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, you really have to look that you are provided this note from yes. the landlord. Uh -huh. Yes really really important um so that's i think the tip you want to give yeah room for an apartment <laughs> even if you're still abroad especially in bigger cities yeah it's, it's really really it's difficult yeah, yeah. i can confirm that <laughs> <laughs> um so how about the job search from abroad and what kind of tips do you have for contacting german employers because we get the feedback from our audience and it's kind of hard mm -hmm. to find a job in Germany, especially from abroad. In my case, it was, <laughs> it was a little easier because a friend of mine studied a master's in Dresden and he told me he knew I was studying German for another reason and learning German. And it was a direct recommendation. So it was simply fast. In a couple of weeks, I got the interview and a couple of weeks later, I got the job. So three months later, we were here. As I, I don't know, about four months, I, I had uh, the job. Um, but I, one recommendation would be to contact not the company, not to apply directly to the positions, but to contact the people in LinkedIn mm -hmm. or in Sync, and just write directly to them because it's. I think it's easier this way. You skip a uh, like I don't know. Uh, a step. Yes. Yeah. You come like in confidence okay. with the, with the person. Yes. So mm -hmm. social media is quite important. Yeah. yeah. I could say. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You get to ask about the company, about the position, introduce yourself, maybe to the person that's actually going to work with you, not the human resources people. So yeah, that's a good tip. Mm -hmm. And then apply for the position, yeah. of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course. I don't leave it there. <laughs> yeah, for me it was completely different. Uh, of course, I wasn't applying from Costa Rica, I was applying here. Um, I have to say the pandemic put a pause on a lot of things we had planned for the for the beginning of our mm -hmm. journey here in Germany. And at first I wanted to learn German, but the schools were closed a month after I started my first course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I had, to, I had to wait like uh, six months, I think, and then I started my online courses. This made things harder and um, slower, of course. So after I had my German certificate, I um, applied for a couple of jobs but got uh, only rejections <laughs> and um, I only got a couple of interviews which were not very good because of my spoken German. Um, of course for almost a year I wasn't able to practice my language uh, because all social life was paused at the moment. Um, but then I realized I could take another path and uh, start a master program and at the university and it could be easier than to find a job uh, through the student way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, that's what I did. That's how it worked. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I enrolled in the master's program in 2021 and secured a student job in 2022. Um, the university's distribution list um, regularly sends emails with job offers to the students, so you get to apply to a lot of uh, job positions from there. And it gets easier because they know you're already in Germany, and you're studying, and you have the language to be at the mm -hmm. university. So it was an easy way for me, actually. Well, not easy at all. <laughs> um, easier as just applying with the experience I had from Costa Rica. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Um, maybe you can tell us something about the typical German job application. Did you have to write something like this, a cover letter, or was it a bit different from employer to employer? Yeah, they ask almost 
always the same. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that shocked me is that in most websites, the recommendation was put a photo of yourself. That's oh, yeah. not um, customary. Customary in Costa Rica, for example. Um, you also have to buy, write this uh, letter um, if you want to apply for the job uh, in which you show your interest uh, for the position. Uh, that's also not uh, mandatory in Costa Rica. And the um, curriculum is also a little bit different. It's like a, more like bullet points and really a structure. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend uh, look for recommendations in the internet because uh, they usually are right about what uh, employers mm -hmm. want in the uh, application. Ah, yeah. So it's, you can confirm that the quite standard right? Yeah. Yeah. And did you have to write a lot of job application? Yeah, I would say like 60. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. To get two interviews. And yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it can be really frustrating. You have to get used to rejection <laughs> yeah. for apartments and for jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for this honest review. Uh, I think since Germany's labor market has a high demand for qualified professionals, um, job application process are comparatively slow, definitely because the uh, employer really take their time to scan the job applications and they receive many, many job applications. And that's why it takes, unfortunately, a bit of time, but uh, don't get sad about it and get your hopes up. Yeah, it's <laughs> nothing personal. <laughs> no, no, no. Have, have patience. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe one question when it comes to the job interview, was it also a bit standardized? Did you have uh, make your research beforehand on the internet or was it different from employer to employer? It was different from employer to employer actually. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes the interview is centered in human resources uh, topics like mm -hmm. uh, where do you see yourself in five years uh -huh. or uh, what are your values and your what would you bring to the company and sometimes it's like um straight to the topic that you're going to work in so mm -hmm. i would say you should know for beforehand who are you talking to before the interview? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it's the people you're going to work with, then maybe you focus on what are your uh, uh, abilities on the job. And if it's human resources, then you check the standardized questions that you can look in the internet and practice for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Do you want to add something? Yeah, in my case, it was pretty standard, but I had I haven't had any with human resources, nor directly with my bosses. The oh. two times I've made an interview. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we were more practical questions. Um, then. Yeah, practical. What what have I done? What can I bring? What do I bring to the company? Mm -hmm. And yeah, maybe where do I see myself in five years? That's oh. a typical question. That's what's most like a conversation as. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, but the interview was conducted online, I think, because it was the first one online, and I made another one here in Germany. I switched oh, yeah. jobs, so I. Ah. Yeah. So we wanted to meet you a second time. <laughs> okay. So next question: How did you learn German, and when did you start? Uh, we began. I don't know. I think 2015, 16. But I only went once a week. I went to the Goethe Institute in Costa Rica and San Jose. It was, I must say. Uh, focus on theory more than in practice because you can practice really once a week. That's maybe a recommendation. So have to search somebody to talk to mm -hmm. a tandem partner or something. But it's it's really important. Um, yeah. Then I don't know. In when I came here, I was mainly focused on the job and performing well, mm -hmm. but. I didn't really take any courses. I think I, I went to a B2 course and a C1 once. But yeah, since then I've learned everything through practice here in Germany. In Costa Rica, I went, I, I got a, a B1, no, a B2 certificate and then uh, I stopped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also began learning at the Goethe Institute in Costa Rica. Um, I think, again, only once a 
wake a couple of hours is not uh, really what you want for to learn a language. When we moved here, I already had a B1 certificate in the paper, <laughs> but I quickly realized that wasn't enough for the everyday life, uh, especially not for working. As Chris already mentioned, it was hard and only through practice that we got to learn the language at the level that we have now. Uh, the courses in Costa Rica focus on textbook, uh, textbook material, so real life interactions were really different here. Mm -hmm. um, people spoke with various accents or dialects mm -hmm. and um, we weren't prepared for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, there were multiple words for the same thing and we had only learned once, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I got my C1 certificate here after taking some courses for uh, six months, intensive courses from nine to one, every day um, so it was really challenging but it got me really fast to the place I wanted to be to apply for the university oh. yeah yeah I'd like to add that the um, B2 certificate that I uh, got in Costa Rica got me through the first interview mm -hmm. that's I think an important point mm -hmm. the interview was in German so <laughs> <laughs> I must have performed well because I got the job, I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> and that's one thing. And the other one is that you need to know that you have learned in when you studied in your in your home country, you learned the technical words for your job mm -hmm. at your time at, in your language. Mm -hmm. In my case, Spanish and maybe some English, it depends. Mm -hmm. But when you come here, it's a learning curve. Uh, also, it takes, I don't know, two or three months and maybe more to learn the words that you, you'll you need in your job, mm. the technical words, because you don't learn that otherwise, yeah. mm -hmm. just by practicing, mm -hmm. okay. by working. Uh, maybe you can tell us uh, by, by working mm -hmm. uh, with the technical terms, did you get any help from your colleagues in this case? Yeah, surely. Yeah. Uh, they were always at hand to, to, to mm -hmm. answer my questions, yeah. Yeah. Uh, people are really patient okay. when it tends to, to be a language barrier, they understand. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's okay. So maybe I want to, to the audience, don't be afraid to ask if you or mm -hmm. stay if you don't understand anything, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, you already mentioned that there are some differences between Germany and Costa Rica uh, and also when it comes to working and maybe you can tell us something about your working life in Germany and how was the collaboration with the colleagues and did you have any received any onboarding or support during the integration process? Mm -hmm. yeah. At the moment I have a 9 to 5 job that's very similar to Costa Rica. That's Costa Rica is what seven to four, <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's that's not that big a difference. Um, maybe here I rarely work overtime, and when I must, I get the hours back as uh, free time. I can exchange them. That's a difference in Costa Rica. You when you work overtime, you work overtime, and that's it. Uh, so you don't get this. And this no compensation. No compensation. When you get it, it's, it can be monetary, but you, it's, it's expected you work a little more. Mm -hmm. So that's not the case here in Germany, at least my case. Uh, that's also uh, thanks to thanks to the pandemic. I must say, we're working yet in a hybrid model. I work two times a week at home and three times a week at uh, office. That is. Uh, Flexible. I can change that every week on you know, which days I work to. I, I didn't have that in Costa Rica, but I don't know how is it working right now. I was always at the office the whole week. Um, also, yeah, the work culture is a, uh, a little bit different. Here you're expecting, expected to perform very well and to give like a quality result. Mm. I think in our home country it is expected that you finish fast your your oh, tasks okay. mm -hmm. and that can sometimes sacrifice quality mm. and I think that's like a main point that I have seen here so they give you your time to to have your things done mm -hmm. 
but they expect a, a big quality from, from you. And what else? Ah, yeah, and um, every day and getting to know your colleagues, it can be a, a little bit harder because I come from a Latin American country and people tend to talk a lot <laughs> in between meetings, in between, I don't know. Here's a little bit harder. You have to have some patience, but there, there are some spaces to, to get to know the people mm -hmm. at, at lunch or at activities from the company too. So mm -hmm. yeah, maybe I, that's like my, that's it. that are my points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I would just like to add that um, worker rights here in Germany are really important not that in costa rica or not but here are like a major thing like uh, on the top of my mind uh, they have huge respect for family matters mm. so you have a family situation a family emergency you of course just have to communicate it to your boss and but they, and you're you're not gonna get um, a bad review or something mm. uh, yeah but the comment because of what you just it because you had to leave work earlier or something like that and um, you can also fall in sick without needing a doctor's note that's yeah. also not usual in Costa Rica uh -huh. um, you don't usually get that level of trust from your bosses um, where everything is tightly controlled actually uh -huh. mm -hmm. and all of these among other things really help with the work-life balance for me mm -hmm. yeah and the collaboration with the colleagues has been very good so far at least in my case i have to say that they have been really patient with me because of the language barrier and they're always willing to help i am very thankful for that and i suppose it depends on where you land <laughs> which mm -hmm. company or kind of company you are at but overall the people i've met here have been really nice um, and quite the opposite to some of the cliches or stereotypes that we've heard before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good to hear. So mm -hmm. in your cases, um, the stereotypes weren't true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that's good to hear. Um, I think uh, the stereotypes are not so into small talk, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's really hard actually because in, in Costa Rica or in Latin America it's, it's very really common. very common to be at the supermarket line and start a conversation out of nothing mm -hmm. and uh, here it's not the case. Also supermarket lines are really uh, stressful and uh, fast <laughs> here in yeah. Germany. <laughs> so, uh, that's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's interesting. And uh, maybe you can tell us something, um, especially as an engineer working mm -hmm. here, is it also good that you notice some differences? Yes, a lot of differences. Mm -hmm. um, related to the job and firstly, okay, let me get uh, my thoughts okay. straight. Yeah. <laughs> of course, take your time. Yeah, the equipment, that's a thing. That, that's very important. Oh, okay. The equipment you have at your availability is enormous in, in comparison because we had limited resources. So you have here softwares and um, the ease to have a, a I don't know, a, how do you say, a Schulung? A, a what? A Schulung. I think uh, like something like uh, further education. Yeah, further education, <laughs> when you need to training. be support, a training, yeah, training yeah. in an, a specific uh, area. area, you get uh, very, very easily. So you need to learn a new software, you, you get a training. We were used to learn that uh, alone, <laughs> 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 by ourselves. Yeah. And that's one really important thing. So the equipment, the trainings, the um, the tasks are really similar. You have to get used to the um, the regulations here. Mm -hmm. Of course, they are different from your home country, uh, but that's that's one thing that's natural to the job. And what can I say? That, I think that's the two things that impress me the most. Oh. How easy it is to become equipment? How easy it is to have high tech, high high end technology at your availability? Yeah. That's very, very different. Okay. 
Yeah, thank you for your answer. So John is not only saying, but also offering the career opportunities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so how are your first weeks and months in Cologne? And what steps were necessary and what unexpected challenges did you encounter here? Mm -hmm. The first weeks we arrived in December mm -hmm. 18th, I think, the 18th. So we went straight to the Christmas market. Mm -hmm. It was a uh, which yeah, are really it, nice. It yeah. was really nice to come in the at that at this time of the year. Uh, so we spent this. I I think I began in January. So we had like two weeks to get to know Cologne, get to know other cities nearby. So we went to the Christmas market, and our life in Germany really began in January with all the bureaucracy. <laughs> <laughs> I had also the chance to get to know my colleagues. Uh, I think before I started, it was, yeah, pretty nice because it, it helped me warm up a little bit with them. We were a small team, so it was easier, we were like 20 people, I think. And yeah, so the real life in January began with the uh, I think this visual circle that I always uh, like to 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 say uh, you when you come in Germany you need to I already said that the reg registration in the city you have you need a place to live you need this registration to hey, the place to live to go to the registration office you need this registration to get your bank account and you need your tax ID but all these things don't, don't happen in order. And maybe there's there are some things that you need to get undone to block unblock the other ones. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to pay special attention to the to these four things. I say that residence, registration, tax ID, and bank account. Mm -hmm. These four things are essential to, mm -hmm. to begin. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that we already knew but didn't expect. To be that true. <laughs> yeah, to be that true or to be that, yeah. that hard, you know, because you can yeah. get a bank, a bank account in one day in Costa Rica. Oh, okay. But here it takes, uh, you know, it's two or three weeks, I don't know, and we didn't yeah, have that into account. Yeah, for us it took two months actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. it was really hard. Yeah. So I've forgotten about that. But... <laughs> yeah, because they ask you for your tax tax ID, but you don't you don't have a tax ID because you just registered. So you have to wait for your ID, and then you need the uh, health insurance to get your um, contract from the work. And until you have this insurance, you don't get the contract, and without the contract, you don't get the tax mm -hmm. ID, and mm -hmm. it's a vicious circle. Yes, mm -hmm. you don't know what comes first, and <laughs> what mm -hmm. what comes next. Mm -hmm. And you keep going to this office, no, this office, no, the mm. next one. So uh, it's a little bit hard. So I would recommend to read, um, make it in Germany, <laughs> all the steps that you need uh, mm -hmm. to get all this bureaucracy done uh, when you arrive mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. It's really important. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the first days um, were a bit hard, a bit tough, I think, because yeah. of the whole bureaucracy process. And um, maybe I can also recommend for the audience that we have an explainer video on the first 100 days in Germany, where all the steps uh, Carolina and Chris uh, explained um, are also explained as well in the video. And we also had a webinar on this topic, I think, last year. Um, maybe uh, Marlene and the back end, if you have time, you can post the link or, or we can do it also later. Um, yeah, thank you. Did you have also met any other unexpected challenges here in Germany or were the most, the, this were the most topics? Um, what can you add? Yeah, as we came in winter, winter was a huge challenge at first. But I have to say, and yeah, coming from the tropics, it was really cold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, what shocked me the most is the light, the lack of light during oh, the days. Sunlight. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. sunlight. Um, like uh, the days are so short in December. They start at 9 a.m. with the sunrise and you have the sunset already at 4.30 p.m. So that was really hard for me. Um, it's kind of cloudy, right? Yeah, it's really, really cloudy. 
the sun doesn't come out that often in winter. I used um, to make fun of people because they went outside when it was sunny. Yeah. <laughs> and now we understand it. We do the same. First day of sun, <laughs> everybody out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you for the honest review. <laughs> yeah. First days and weeks and months are kind of tough. You need to prepare beforehand and yeah, also the, sorry, I would like to add something yeah, about the apartment looking, ah, yeah. uh, which was really unsuccessful at first because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But after a lot of failed applications, we found a new apartment complex, which had a lot of apartments uh, available and it was easier to get a viewing appointment uh, and finally an apartment to rent. I have to say, this could be a tip actually mm -hmm. for newcomers. Uh, try to find new buildings where there's no one land landlord with one apartment, mm -hmm. but maybe a real estate company that uh, manages the property and you may increase your chances uh, okay. of getting an apartment. Of course, new buildings are harder to find in the center of the city, but if you go to the surroundings, you may find something which was our case. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it could be also a tip yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. This hard yeah, time. I'd like to add, uh, the apartment hunt is, yeah, a serious matter. Yeah. Yeah, we've already said that three times. Yeah. But yeah, you need to you need to plan in advance. Mm -hmm. After your short stay rental, you need to have I don't know plan three, four, six months in advance, mm -hmm. and really start looking, and yes. not just looking but applying. Yeah. And to many apartments you can, and at the beginning you'll have to stay at the First place where you become an, an appointment or where you become a, a positive answer. Okay. It's like don't don't get too picky at the beginning. Then you'll you'll have the chance to to change if you don't like your apartment. But it's okay. yeah, really important. Yeah, thank mm. you for your uh, honest <laughs> sharing this honest experience. Also, I think this is really really important to so mm -hmm. don't underestimate the yeah. uh, housing market here in Germany. Um, so. Think up. Do we have do you have any other tips based on your personal experiences? So it was looking for housing, mm -hmm. take your time, take your time in preparing. Mm -hmm. What other tips did you also? Learn the language. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't believe what you've been told that you can get away here with English. You can speak English, yeah, but it does don't get gets you very much further as mm -hmm. you do. There are not that many, that many jobs in, in English mm -hmm. and you'll have to, to learn German for the bureaucracy, for your everyday life. When you go to the doctor, it, it, made, it makes things really, really easier when you learn the language. You have to have patience. You don't have to be afraid to speak. Mm -hmm. I think that's the only way that one can learn a, a language by speaking. Mm -hmm. And yeah, as I said, the people are patient. You have you can explain yourself and whatnot. You can throw a, part, a couple of words in English, and it, it can. At the end, it solves itself. Um, what else? Yeah, I have it here noted. <laughs> <laughs> um, keep an eye on the validity of your residence permit. Oh, yeah. Also, plan in advance mm -hmm. because as as. As I said, there's bureaucracy like in every country, mm -hmm. but that's very important. So if you your validity, if your residence permit expires in I don't know six months, so start uh, writing an email, start calling mm -hmm. the, the migration mm -hmm. yeah foreign office, mm -hmm. and it's always to be. Uh, yeah, yeah it, it can take some time yeah. before you get the appointment. So mm -hmm. very important planning in advance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We haven't had a bad experience. We've made everything on time, and it's been yeah, quite quite, been quite good, well. Yeah. yeah, I must say. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's not the experience for everyone. We've mm -hmm. heard some stories about the <laughs> uh, difficulty to get an appointment at foreigners' office. Mm -hmm. So uh, be aware of that. Yeah. Maybe you can add. Like, I have yeah. also a couple of tips on the weekend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. It's really important to have patience, like um, mm -hmm. to settle in a new country, especially if you have a, a huge uh, culture shock could be difficult, but I would say it takes almost 
five years to feel like you oh, okay. make it like really uh -huh. you've made it like a to the point you want to be like okay. to have a relaxed life and everything mm -hmm. settled you know uh -huh. uh, you have your job your uh, finances are good um, you have friends it could mm -hmm. take some time uh -huh. um it's not uh, that on the first years are gonna suffer or something mm -hmm. but it's it gets better with time and you have uh -huh. to be patient um i would also like to add fine activities for the winter mm -hmm. when you go out to the city in winter and you see it could look a little bit dead it's mm -hmm. not that people don't go out it's just that they're inside yeah. <laughs> so, so looking for activities uh, for the winter is really important to keep yourself occupied uh -huh. Um, Chris, uh, Chris wanted to mention also about the, the clubs. The... Yeah, I want to mention find spaces, uh, um, people, clubs with uh, your same interests. I mm -hmm. think it's the best place to know, the best place to know people, mm -hmm. to make friends. Yeah, okay. And when the people are, I think the place where people are more open to make also small talk. I don't know. Yeah, I, that's my experience. A sports club, yeah. yeah. Hobbies. Club, mm -hmm. like board yeah. games clubs or something like that and, yeah. Yeah. there are plenty of them so yeah, yeah. you can <laughs> find them uh, on the internet especially instagram and facebook are really helpful for that they are many many there are many many clubs uh, that you can join so okay. don't be afraid to ask uh, if you share your interest with these people it's easier to find friends <laughs> okay so, uh, Klein, if you have an entre interest or you want to learn something new, clubs today. Yeah, mm -hmm. clubs, hobbies, activities. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you shared also some of your experiences since you came at the life here uh, to Germany. Um, maybe you can tell us um, were you able to do your own thing quickly and how did you make friends and clubs maybe also <laughs> and, and how was it to find out what you want to really want to do in Germany? Yeah, I have to say honestly it took me like um three years to feel like I wanted I like I really wanted to stay in Germany and make a life here. And mm -hmm. um, my path as I already told was not that easy because of the pandemic mostly because everything was paused and the fact that I started the university mm -hmm. so it took me a little longer to get there but I have to say it was worth it to be patient um, because once the hurdles of the pandemic were over I quickly got to uh, interact with more people get back on track with my own things and um, in yeah uh, overall um, fill my calendar with things to do. I have to admit that most of my friends here in Germany are internationals, mostly Latinas. <laughs> uh, I guess it's easier for us to get together with people uh, from abroad because sometimes, and it is completely understandable, Germans already have their groups uh, of friends mm. from the university, from high school, from their hometown. Um, but I think it's not that bad at all to have international groups of friends it makes me feel good to have them no matter where they come from and i say this because one of the recommendations you hear the most when you come here is oh don't 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 spend that much time with latinas because you won't learn uh, the language and yes of course you have to focus on learn on learning german but you also have to focus on feeling well yeah. <laughs> to be able to yeah. learn the language yeah. so um if you don't have uh, people around that often, you take what you get and you focus on the good things in life and then you can uh, start uh, focusing on the language and so on. So I would say, yeah, rely on the people that are near you, no matter where, where they come from. And I think it is true that when you make a German friend is a friend for life. So it's also worth it to <laughs> look there for German friends they're really really nice they're really friendly it's just harder maybe to yeah they're unconditional really <laughs> but it may be harder to get 
to the point where you at uh, where you are at with your friends in there in in your country but it's worth it thank you yeah. thank you yeah, I think so. On the note, you want to say that um, do your thing, but you also want to do even uh, feeling more comfortable with international friends and just practice German. Next yeah. Year, like, yeah. Here in Germany yeah. And also just working, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. So don't focus in only one thing yeah. because it could make you feel bad. Yes, of but course. Living abroad. Yes, thank you. Is really worth <laughs> So, what is your life today since you had a bit of hurdles at the beginning, and uh, what has changed since you arrived? Yeah, I would have to say that because of this good work life balance, our lives now look really relaxed and um, we get to enjoy a lot of things like cultural activities, entertainment, uh, sports. Um, classes uh, i don't know mm -hmm. we get to travel a little very bit often. Yeah, yeah around europe mainly and germany which mm -hmm. is also very nice um but we feel overall really calm and uh, mostly because we don't have to worry about things like safety health uh, health system access transportation security yeah i have safety yeah, yeah. It took us some time to get there, but mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. we feel that this balance, life balance here very in Germany balance. is pretty good. Yeah. Very, very good. Especially in summer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd, like, I'd like to add the words. Maybe I'm part of a sports club. I play futsal mm -hmm. two times a week. I'm part of a team. So I have training twice a week. We also go to the gym, to sports, uh, to all other sport classes. We have plans every weekend. I don't know. I think it's it's getting similar to what, what we had in, in Costa Rica. Uh, oh, like okay. plans every day. With the difference that that what Carol said, this work life balance, mm -hmm. that we have time to make things after work because oh, okay. the job is near our home. We only need 15, 20 minutes. I come back to work. That's also very important for me. And I don't have to depend on the car because we, we or we use the car. We use the car a lot in Costa Rica. The transportation was uh, not that good. So I think that's that are things that gave like an added value to, mm -hmm. to, the, to the life here in Germany. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here. Um, so I think you already mentioned so that the work-life balance is one thing mm -hmm. you really like about Germany. And um, do you have any other aspects you want to mention? And do you still have any challenges you still encounter today? We've we've spoken a little bit about work conditions, mm -hmm. but maybe I think that's one of the main things because I have, for example, 34 uh, days of holiday or vacation, depending on if you speak American or, or British mm -hmm. <laughs> English. Um, and that's very, very important. Uh, we get to go out to back to our home country mm. as tourists. Yeah. <laughs> but that's very nice to visit the family. We have some a lot of time we mm. can spend there. And also here we can take long, long holidays. Yeah. And, and that adds to the ease to travel inside Europe. Uh, you get to know a lot of countries that otherwise you have had to make a, like an Euro trip to to learn them all and uh, to get to know them all. Mm -hmm. Um, that are like uh, okay and challenges. I still, I'd say the language is still a challenge, but because I like to speak better, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. just the one thing. But I think we're in a point now that it's been it's enough and it's good for for performing well at the job and so have a social life mm -hmm. and. You're still missing a couple of things to get to like your life balance with Costa Rica. Like I still don't have a driver's license, and mm -hmm. sometimes I miss that. The, oh, the, okay. Like to rent a car or to rent a, a bigger car to to move from I don't know to help uh, somebody move to another home. I think these little things are 
I think we're getting solved maybe in the next year in the next couple of years, but that's a tiny challenges in comparison mm -hmm. with what we we've just yeah accomplished. Yeah. Yeah, like this, I also love that we can easily travel around Europe, but also like here in the city, the transportation, uh, although not always in time, <laughs> it's really reliable and you can also travel by bike, uh, mm -hmm. like safely travel by bike, because in Costa Rica that was not the case. Um, I also like that um, it opened my mind to a lot of possibilities, uh, career-wise and um, per in personal life also. And also cultures from around the world, being that Germany is such an international country, also Cologne is particularly international. And I also love the vacation days that we already mentioned. Um, that's really nice to have for um, work-life balance. Um, and as a woman, I would like to add, I feel safer in Germany when I walk mm -hmm. on the streets uh, at night alone. Although it's never 100% uh, safe, it was much more difficult to do that in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. um, and for challenges, I would say improving my spoken German is still a challenge for me every day because I'm not still where I want to be. <laughs> but that only comes with practice and then... A little yeah. bit of time. Uh, a little yeah. bit of time, yeah. The bureaucracy is always there in processes like taxes or renewal of the residence permits. Uh, as we said, the foreigners' authority is not that easy to mm -hmm. um, handle, but um, yeah, mm -hmm. it's not very hard after four years and a half. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not that crazy to learn a little bit about taxes before you come. Oh. Yeah, mm -hmm. that would be a good recommendation. There are a lot of, yeah. a lot of blogs about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> some useful information. Germans don't have to learn about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, most of the challenges that we've uh, talked about are also also apply for German yeah. people. Yeah. 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 Not yeah. only for experts. No. Mm -hmm. So I have some complicated systems here, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, the system somehow works, so yeah. it's worth it at the end. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. yeah, thank you for sharing your story and yeah, congratulations. You accomplished so many things in Germany. <laughs> you really made it. And one thing I want to know is I think since we spoke German beforehand, the German is just excellent. Yeah. <laughs> so when they say you still need a condom, it's really, really impressive. So you'll really be proud. Um, thank you for thank sharing. You. It's really, really inspiring the story. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. So now we are uh, closing this interview and now we have time for your questions. Um, I am done sharing my screen here. I'm really curious and about your questions. I think my colleague will come here. Yes, <laughs> she's coming here. Hi. Hi. <laughs> That's some technical issues. That's why she had to come here. Mm -hmm. So now you can see her as well. That's well, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, I tried to answer all your questions in the chat. Yeah, we had some uh, personal questions on your specific case. So I was, uh, advise most of you please to read our website and inform yourself about all the visa types and um, if you can bring your family and so on. Um, but there are also some questions for Carolina and Chris. And, uh, yeah, the first one is, um, hi Carolina, in your case, do you currently use a student visa or a working visa? So, because of Chris's visa, I got to come to Germany with a, a family reunification visa. So, as I had the B1 level of German, I immediately got my working visa, so my working permit. And that's my current status. Yeah, I don't depend on the master program to get my visa and so but uh, that's only because we're married mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah okay. but maybe to clarify for our audience uh, both of you came together here yeah we came uh, together. did it take some time for you and you came later mm. we came at the same time yeah, yeah we yeah. came at the same time yeah family reunification is just a name but if you come at the same time you get the, the visa once you mm -hmm. apply for it and we got it at the same time yeah. at the same time because uh, Chris had the EU blue card, right? Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, so uh, thank you. And um, yeah, another question is uh, maybe for Chris now. Um, what do you require to get a formal recognition to use the title of engineer in Germany? Uh, in my process applying to the visa at the embassy, there's a web page called Anavin, I think. Mm -hmm. And there you can read if your um, certificate, your university um, certificate. certificate is recognized here in Germany. So I didn't need anything to work as an engineer, just to send a screenshot or to print this, this page as PDF and send it to the embassy. That's the only thing I needed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Um, yeah, another question is, um, I don't know if you can uh, talk about it, how's uh, the job market for engineers in Germany, because there were also many questions about, I'm mm -hmm. applying for a long time, um, but I don't find any position, maybe because of my uh, English or German skills, mm -hmm. the German skills, yeah, so how do you see the okay. job market for engineers in Germany? I can, as an example, uh, we had a, a position open for two or three months in this area, road and railway planning, and only one person applied because not many people study that here in Germany anymore. But it is required to have a, a good level of German. Mm -hmm. So my advice again would be to talk direct, directly to the people in the company if you can find them on LinkedIn or, or in Sync, and tell them a bit of, a little bit about yourself. Maybe you can get through. Mm. and skip the otherwise because otherwise um, it's like very difficult to prove that the people really can speak German. You have to invite them to a, mm. to, a, to an interview to get that done and not very, that's unfortunate, but not very uh, do that. Not very, not a lot of officers do that. Mm. And yeah, I'd like to add that at least I'm in my area, there's a lot of jobs. There's a lot of job opportunities, but the IT sector is yeah a little bit crowded. So it's not the same for, for every area. So okay. as an example, mm -hmm. energy, mm -hmm. energy, civil engineering, that's what I know. It's that's a, a really job. A re, a, there are a really lot of job offers at the moment. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, yeah, thanks. Um yeah, uh, as usual, we had many questions about the opportunity card, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just to clarify here, so uh, Chris and Carolina, they didn't have the opportunity card, but they had the EU blue card. So the opportunity card is just a job-seeking visa if you don't have a job yet, or you don't want to find a job from abroad, and um, but you want to search in Germany. But then you need a blocked account uh, or like a declaration of commitment. Um, so you have to prove a lot of financial <laughs> resources to get this uh, opportunity card. But if you want to find a job beforehand, then you have other visa type opportunities. So you can, for example, apply for the EU blue card, what they did, and maybe already come here together as a family or they are, um, yeah, these are for skilled workers, so sometimes the opportunity card might not be the best option for you. So it really depends on your personal situation, if you already found a job in Germany or not, and if you have the financial resources or not. So yeah, please uh, read uh, all about it on our website, but um, it's not always the best opportunity to apply for the opportunity card. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Um, um, yeah, another question was, uh, you said it's uh, good to apply um, on LinkedIn and mm -hmm. uh, do you have other resources you've used or uh, you mentioned Sing, I guess, do you mm -hmm. know other portals? Um... Yeah, that's the only two I know. That's mm -hmm. that, There's uh, Indeed. Mm -hmm. It's another uh, website. It's another website. But my mm -hmm. colleagues only use this, this two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I usually apply, uh, apply directly to the company position, but what I tend to do is to write an email, an email directly to the person that's uh, posting the position to introduce myself and tell them that I'm going to apply through the company's portal. Oh, okay. So I think that's a tip mm -hmm. also. Yeah. 
And you can also look uh, through online research, um, um, just look for German uh, job listings, which is then the most popular ones will be pop out <laughs> in the results. And of course, you have to make it in German job listings. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I think uh, that's it from my side. We have like four o'clock now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So thank you for participating in our webinar and uh, you have listened to this really inspiring story. Thank you for sharing your experiences with us and yeah, wish you all the best. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you again for the invitation. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.